This is a special damper cutter, a uh, guillotine. Um, guillotine, which is very sharp indeed, but I should have put a piece of formica underneath to cut up against, because it's been used so much that it's got a trough. There you are, that, that should keep you going for... That will, thank you. And then if uh, you take a pair of scissors and you cut it at whatever thickness you want, like so, and then to the length that you want, you'll be home and dry. But you see how, how nice an edge it makes of it? Yes. Here we are at the end of the day with both manuals in. Um, obviously up and manual needs tuning and we've got to regulate it. And the complications are uh, dealing with the swapping over between, you can see the jacks moving, the ones in the front left and the ones at the back going right. The ones at the back going right are more difficult to see. Let's look at there. Here we'll see it. Can see it. And this swaps between one set of plectra. And the other. Um, and so it's coming. The next problem also is, however, that um, this keyframe is actually slightly warped um, and so uh, I don't know if I can get that to be a straight line, there we are. Um, it's bowing up slightly in the middle, it's difficult to see with this and as a result the central keys go down less and so we've got to take out uh, the, uh, the extra spacer washers from a lot of these which will give um, much better regulation. Um, it's a fiddly process. Um, oh dear, I have to put that back in. Um, and so it's now just minor work uh, to make it much more playable. And uh, so we're nearly finished. We've come across a couple of jacks with problems. This one, the plectra, um, is, needs replacing. Oh, well, yes. And Yes, and it's very, very, these plectra are very, very hard, hard, uh, forced into the... Yes, I've taken difficult. them out before. I know, but they're very, very hard. That's right. Yes. And then this one, it was missing its tongue completely. That's right. So we fashioned this out of a small piece of wood, and can't see it against in this stronger light. And um, Michael is just about to drill the hole and insert it into the jack. Um, and he comes with all sorts of precision tools to make sure that everything is exactly right. With micrometer, special drills of the right size, hopefully. And now we have the precision hole. We have indeed the precision hole in hopefully the precision place. The centre pin... Hang on, the light's too strong. Oh, right, turn that off. Right. Turn that off. Yes. OK, the hole, the centre pin, and through the precision hole with the precision centre pin, holding it at each end. Wonderful. It's captivated by the sides, one side of the jack body, one hole is smaller than the other. Ah. Oh. Therefore, I have chamfered, I've put a chamfer on the end of this pin. Is that the same for all, uh, all jacks, or is it just unique to this instrument? Well, I don't know. I think this is uh, according to the jack maker. But um, essentially, it is the it is the tongue which pivots, um, and not the, the jack itself. 
the body of the jack has to hold the ends of the pin. The next thing we have to do is to decide where the hole for the tongue has to go. And does that mean we have to mount it first and then demount it? Mm, not necessarily. Uh, I think... Is, is this from the same rank? It is. Uh, no, it's not. I'll find one from the we'll same rank. one from the same rank so that we can... Do it. I'll, I'll drive this, this old one out in the meantime. That has to go through... I wasn't sure which way it went to. I think it goes yeah. from back to this front. Is, this is the uh, the business side. And so it comes out backwards. And if it doesn't, then we In have trouble. to just... No. Eventually it gives in. I Not this one. Oh, I think uh, what's happened here is it's been glued in. No. Oh dear. That's why it's difficult to come out. We've been driving this old tongue, oh sorry, the old plectra through from the business side, the plucking side, and where it was, you notice how it's now sticking out there. Whereas before it was quite... It's, yeah, it's, uh, the camera is deciding to be very finicky about focusing on that for the moment. But we can see it there. Are we focused? We are focused. Right, we're going to pull it out. Maxim's going to the dentist tomorrow. Charming. <laughs> no, it needs, it needs more persuasion. Oh dear. You know, Maxim, your dad makes very cruel jokes. Do you think he makes cruel jokes? Well, he plays a mean violin, so... Oh, I see. I was playing a mean cello yesterday. I had to put another bridge on it, poor old thing. Let's see how we're doing here. Yes, it's out a little further. Uh, it can't, it won't grip it. Here yeah, Michael's coming to regulate the, known as the Pur de Boeuf. Uh, rank, which are these ranks with um, <coughs> leather plectra, um, and they sort of a bit like a great big thumb that plucks the string, and um, rather than Delrin quill as such, and uh, it gives a softer, softer sound, and actually one that's slightly more, slightly more sort of heavy. It gives out the added volume. Um, can't get that back into place. That's it. Um, and the dampers of the quills are the dampers for the Pur de Boeuf as well, but this is quite unusual. And it's also quite unusual because many of the leather plectrode harpsichords have hard leather which are shaped as quills, as a, as a replacement for quills, and they sound quite like quills, but these ones are, are much thick, thicker, more like a thumb in a string like a harp. adjusting these that hopefully they might pluck just slightly sooner without having to feel that one has to go right to the bottom of the keys to get them to play. 